You're watching WKBT Lacrosse. This is News 8 Now at 5. Good evening, everyone, and thanks for joining us for News 8 Now at 5. I'm Ken Kozarowski. The polls on Election Day still open today for several hours, but we are on storm watch here in our viewing area. So let's first switch things over to our chief meteorologist, Bill Grawl, for a look at what's what's happening outside. Yeah, we've been uh, tracking uh, yet another potent storm system for several days now, so let's get right to it. The latest uh, severe weather risk areas from the Storm Prediction Center and pretty much uh, a good portion of our viewing area shaded in yellow. That is a level two risk. Again, the higher threat down to the south where you see that level three risk uh, near and south of Prairie du Chien. Now, local timing hasn't changed much from what I was thinking 24 hours ago, about 7 p.m. to midnight. Uh, I think the main threat with these storms will be large hail. They'll be stronger to our south and then gradually weaken as they lift to the north away from a warm front, but still some hail potential and then a lesser threat of strong winds and isolated tornadoes. Again, I think the higher tornado threat to our south. So no severe weather alerts in our neck of the woods right now, but look at that giant yellow box down to the south. That is a tornado watch until 10 o'clock this evening. And uh, again, that's where the storms are currently firing. So make sure you download that uh, first warn weather app. It's a great way to stay informed and ahead of the storm. And best of all, it's free. So check it out. Currently, all is quiet in La Crosse, very similar to last Friday where we had the low clouds, uh, a few showers and thunderstorms earlier today that put down some small hail. Uh, those have uh, tracked out of the area, but look at down towards Des Moines. You can see some stronger storms that are warned in terms of uh, some uh, high wind gusts upwards of 50 to 60 miles per hour and some quarter size hail. Uh, just to the south and west of Ames, Iowa. So we'll have to watch those storms over Iowa as they lift northeast towards us and see how much they hold their intensity as they track away from that warm front. Current temperatures, you can tell we're clearly on the cool side of the warm front, 30s and 40s locally, and uh, temperatures will actually rise overnight as that warm front gets closer. Again, those scattered showers and thunderstorms, some of which could be strong to severe. Uh, keep it here. I'll keep a close sign up for you and let you know if any watches or warnings mm -hmm. shall be issued. Again, the full eight-day forecast in just a few minutes. Sounds like a plan. Thanks, Bill. Back on the news side of things this evening, it is Election Day in Wisconsin and the future of Wisconsin's Supreme Court and a constitutional amendment now in the hands of voters. We will have team coverage throughout the night as we watch the results come in, but polls are open until 8. And we start our team coverage with News A Now's Emily Haugen, who is live at the La Crosse Public Library. Emily, are there many people voting on this beautiful spring day? Hi, Ken. Yes, it's a big day for Wisconsin voters. We've kind of seen the turnout ebb and flow here at the library, but about 600 pe pe 650 people, my goodness, have turned out here for voting today, which is pretty impressive. Um, one of the biggest draws today, of course, as we've learned, is the state race for Supreme Court. So Republican-backed Dan Kelly and Democratic-backed Janet Protasiewicz are going head-to-head. -head. So if Protasiewicz wins, she will effectively flip the court. And there's been a lot of money poured into this race, over $42 million dollars. That nearly triples the previous national record for a court race. That's a lot of money. It will be very interesting to see how that money all translates to turnout as numbers roll in tonight because of course we still have plenty of time. Let's see it's only five until eight for all these people to come in plus absentee ballots to be counted. Um, but yeah here at the library we're seeing turnout ebb and flow. It's been pretty good. Lab in Lacrosse, this is Emily Haugen. Back to you, Ken. All right, thanks very much, Emily. And a reminder that polls close at 8. You can register at your polling place. Just make sure to have a proof of residence along with your photo ID. Now, there are also constitutional amendments on Wisconsinites' ballots. If approved, these amendments will become law. The first asks voters if the state legislature can change the language in the section of the Constitution that describes bail conditions for people in custody. The change would amend the phrase serious bodily harm to serious harm. The amendment would allow judges to consider harm that might not involve physical injury and allow legislators to create a statutory definition of serious harm. Now, question two asks if a judge should be allowed to impose cash bail on a person accused of violent crime and take past convictions into account. Voting no on this question would keep the current Constitution, which allows judges to consider ensuring an accused person makes a court appearance, preventing intimidation of witness, and as addressed in question one, protecting the community from that serious bodily harm. Northside lacrosse voters will decide who they want as their common council members. If you live on the north side, you'll be voting for council members in districts 1 through 6. However, only the first and second districts have more than one candidate running. In District 1, Zach Harder and Tamara Dickinson are running for a seat on the council. District 1 covering parts of northwest lacrosse. Michael Davis and Aaron Goggin are candidates for District 2, another north side region. And again, these races will only appear on your ballot if you're a resident of Northside Lacrosse. And in Lacrosse, one of the biggest races on the ballot is the school board race. News 8 Now's Dua Israr is live from the district's administration building with everything you need to know about this one. Hey, Dua. 
Ken, there are four open seats and eight candidates running. This is the highest number of openings that the school board has seen in over 31 years. Now, there's a few challenges that the district has faced. The biggest debate being the $195 million referendum. The district wanted to consolidate its two high schools into one building. Superintendent Aaron Engel said that consolidation was necessary because of declining enrollment. Now members of the La Crosse City Council, County Board and community members have spoken out against that referendum and many said that there wasn't enough communication from the school board. The La Crosse School Board has a policy that limits its communication with members of the media. All media requests go to the board president and only the board president. In the midterm election, nearly 69% of La Crosse voters rejected that referendum. Now, News 8 spoke to several of the board candidates running tonight, and many said that the reason they're running is because they want to include a diverse number of voices on that school board. Voters have until 8 p.m. to cast their ballots and decide what that new school board will look like. Ken reporting live at Hogan Administration Building. Do us our News 8 now. Back to you. Thanks very much, Dua. The La Crosse School District is also putting an operational referendum on this April ballot. It's asking voters to approve an extension of a 2018 referendum that will exceed revenue limits by six and a quarter million dollars next school year and then $10.75 million for the next five school years. This district says the funds will be used for operational and maintenance expenses, as well as retaining staff, student support and mental health services, and security improvements. For voters in West Salem, there is a public safety referendum on the ballot. The village is asking voters to raise the tax levy to increase funding for the city's police department. The extra $500,000 a year would help the city hire three more police officers and support staff. Wisconsin 3rd Congressional District Representative Derek Van Orden paid a visit to a farm in La Crosse this afternoon to talk about a new energy bill. The congressman is touring Wisconsin farms to discuss the Lower Energy Costs Act. It passed in the House last week. This bill seeks to reverse the Biden administration's climate plan in the Inflation Reduction Act. Van Orden says the bill he supports will work to restore American energy independence and that the reversal is necessary. The agriculture industry is the one thing that affects every single American regardless of any demographic. Rich poor, Republican, Democrat, independent, we, we have to eat. And until we start lowering these energy costs, our food costs are gonna, are gonna remain high and it's unacceptable. Van Orden has also co-sponsored the Defend America's Rural Energy Act, better known as the DARE Act. That's to, quote, help keep American soil in American hands. The DARE Act works to prohibit foreign adversaries such as China from purchasing American farmland, and it's likely to have bipartisan support. T Senator Tammy Baldwin told News 8 Now earlier this year the amount of land being bought up by those foreign countries has Congress pretty concerned. All right, time to switch things up and go back to the world of weather with our chief meteorologist, Bill Grawl. It's the way to do it. You have technical issues off the top. That way you all don't have to sit through commercial <laughs> breaks, <laughs> right, right, that's how it is. All right, uh, let's get back to that severe threat because it's, again, got my full attention for this evening and tonight. Local timing, again, hasn't changed much since 24 hours ago. About 7 p.m. to midnight is the way it's looking right now. Level two risk for much of our area mainly for that uh, main threat of large hail. Now what's going to happen, storms over Iowa will lift to the north and east away from a warm front, and as they do, they should weaken uh, slowly but surely, uh, but uh, we will continue to see that threat as that moves into the area. Again, strong winds and isolated tornadoes, kind of a secondary uh, threat. If you're seeing that uh, bar from home, I apologize. Uh, again, just you'll have to bear with us here. Uh, level one risk, look at this, all the way from the UP of Michigan, down to South Texas. So another huge portion of the country being impacted by this severe weather threat uh, late today and into tonight. Currently all is quiet, just cloudy skies. We've had some uh, scattered showers and thunderstorms earlier today. 44 was the high, average high is 55, but we're actually going to climb overnight into the lower to middle 50s. And so far, uh, only one one hundredth of an inch of rain out at the La Crosse Airport, but uh, we should add to that later this evening. 42 degrees at the airport and downtown. Winds out of the east 11. The Mississippi continues to rise 8.68 feet and uh, cloudy for you folks in Eau Claire and even chillier, 37 degrees. But look at where this warm front sits. My goodness. 80s to the south of it, lower to middle 80s in Kansas City and St. Louis, even as close as Des Moines, Iowa, 76 degrees. But we are firmly 
on the cooler side of that front locally with temperatures in the 30s and 40s, although we are approaching 50 degrees in our far southern counties. Breezy day from the east at about 15 to 25, and we're seeing gusts upwards of 30 to 35 miles per hour at time. So let's take a radar tour down to the south and west. These are the storms I'm going to watch closely out down towards Ames, Iowa, Des Moines, and as they lift north and east, into our area. We'll have to see just how strong they remain as they kind of outrun this warm front which sits to our south. But overnight or later this evening, that warm front will continue to gradually lift to the north as this area of low pressure tracks almost uh, directly over the area. So we've got the severe threat locally, much like last Friday. It's winter, blizzard conditions across the northern plains and into far northern parts of Minnesota into the UP of Michigan. All right, timing things out on SkyTracker, showing after about 7 o'clock some stronger storms potentially in parts of southeastern Minnesota, northeastern Iowa, racing northeast across the area between about 7 o'clock and uh, maybe 11 o'clock or so, maybe as late as midnight, and then after that, uh, things should quiet down with just some scattered showers at times. Tomorrow is looking dry after a slight chance of showers in the morning, but quite windy. South to westerly winds, uh, 15 to 30, maybe gusts of 40 to 45 miles per hour. So for tonight, that alert night, if you will, with scattered showers and thunderstorms, some of which could be strong to severe, especially to the south. Temperatures actually rising to about 53 overnight and then tomorrow 54 in the morning then falling temperatures in the afternoon with those strong southwest winds uh, 15 to 30 gusting to 45 miles per hour and looking ahead uh, kind of breezy yet and cool Thursday 48 back in the 50s on Friday and boy the latest data really warming things up as we head into uh, the weekend and next week especially small chance for some sprinkles or showers over the weekend uh, lots of dry time though in fact many spots might stay dry both days and then 70 plus degrees potentially as we head into next week. So uh, dare I say spring has sprung oh, or boy. is about to spring <laughs> or about to sprung. Yeah, something like that. Oh, I mean, that is <laughs> that is quite the heat wave. Quite yeah. the heat wave. Uh, 70s, ooh, that's, for multiple days. That's going to feel hot. We haven't been uh, above 70 yet this year, so. Yeah, all right. Well, I think we'll enjoy early next week for sure. I think so, too. All right, we'll just get through today in the meantime. Yeah, keep an eye on things tonight. Again, download that First Warren weather app. Make sure you stay informed. All right, Bill, thanks very much. Okay. When we come back tonight at 5, calling all volunteers, Habitat for Humanity is asking you to help your neighbors on Earth Day. Visit the Early Bird Home Show, going on now at the Ford Store Home Improvements. Lowest prices of the year on your 2023 project. Windows, bathrooms, and more. If anybody asks me, like, why should I come work for Phillips? It's you know, just more like a family. If you want to be a part of a family and a growing team, it's a place to be. Phillips is hiring sales consultants. Love what you do. Go to phillipsoutdoorservices.com for more information and to apply. When you rent a Culligan water softener, there is no down payment or maintenance costs. Imagine all you could do with the savings. <laughs> Dive into better water. Contact your local Culligan water dealer. Life's more rewarding at Blaine's Farm and Fleet, especially during our outdoor sale. Right now, get unbeatable deals on our quality selection of spring supplies for outdoor projects. Like $50 instant savings on this Craftsman trimmer and blower kit. Up to $20 off Scott's Turf Builder Crabgrass Preventer or Weed and Feed after sale and mail-in rebate. Large bags of Blaine's Golden Harvest Bird Food, just $14.99. And Blaine's Rewards members get $100 off these men's cat boots. Find value at Blaine's Farm and Fleet. Happy Take and Bake Tuesday. Tuesday. Every Tuesday at Papa Murphy's, you can get any large pizza for just $12, which makes Tuesday the best day to bring home all your favorites. We might have too many favorites. Order now at PapaMurphy's.com. Just 24 hours a day, how can I get more? There is no amount that is enough. Because <laughs> you, you just have no control. Opioid use just takes all control away from the human being. Find out how to use Narcan, get it, and keep it on you. Keep it in your house, keep it in your vehicle, wherever it can be kept, just have it on hand. What makes Phillips unique to me is that I never come into work feeling like a number. Ben, Brianna, Tyler, everybody in the office, they really just make coming in every day enjoyable and I think that's really important. Jennifer Garner talks her new TV project with pal Reese Witherspoon. I couldn't jump at it fast enough, honestly. Next, DT. Thank you for watching News 8 Now. Expect more.
Welcome back to News A Now at 5. A Habitat for Humanity needs your help. The organization is hosting a large volunteer event for Neighbors Day coming up on April 22nd. Volunteers will help clean, cut, and rake yards for residents who can't do it themselves. And to assist the 200 residents, Habitat needs about 500 volunteers to help those community members prepare for spring weather. The volunteer work that we do for recipients is kind of contained in their yards. It's that idea of getting their yards ready for spring. So it's those basic things that we all kind of get out and do as soon as the sun starts shining. If you need help maintaining your yard on Neighbors Day, you need to register by April 13th. Now, if you're interested in volunteering, you got to register before the 18th. We will have a look at what's coming up at 6 when we come back. And of course, Bill will be back in to have another check of these thunderstorm chances. I came here and I started working for this company and three months later, I got promoted to be a line lead. Working for pilgrims is uh, great because they treat you like a family member. Lori Robbie enjoys working at Park Bank because she thought bigger banks had lost touch with customers. Lori also enjoys serving the community. Lori enjoys the personal connection with customers. Lori secretly enjoys reading medieval literature. Lori enjoys working with a great staff dedicated to customer success. Lori also enjoys growing hostas. So visit Lori at Park Bank and Holman to talk about your financial dreams and getting down and dirty with gardening. Park Bank, equal housing lender, member FDIC. Introducing the Starmark Composite Window, now available exclusively at Clear Choice Window and Home Solutions. With its solid frame construction, this revolutionary window is 2,000% more airtight 40% more energy efficient and 12 times stronger than the average vinyl window. And at a price less than what many companies charge for lower quality vinyl windows. Receive a free triple pane upgrade on select windows and 24 months interest free financing. I've never been afraid to express myself, to create a life I love. I worried cancer could steal my spark and become my identity. But UW Health designed custom treatments just for me. And now, my legacy, it's still in the making. Because standard, well, that's never been my style. UW Health, remarkable. American craftsmanship. It's getting harder to find and even harder to experience as the focal point of your home. But not with Vermont Castings. Our stoves and inserts are hand-built with you in mind. No detail is too small, no element insignificant. The result? Timeless furniture quality beauty that delivers efficient heat to your home. Handcrafted to set your living space apart in style and in comfort. Come into warming trends. So I come to this country looking for opportunities and I found out in Pilgrims. The opportunities in here are like infinity. Give pilgrims an opportunity, it's gonna be great and it's a really, really good place for it. Hi, my car was just towed. You look just like Mario Lopez. That, that's me. <laughs> just gonna need to see your ID. It's actually in my car. I'm Mario Lopez and this is Access Hollywood. Hey, I'm Mario Lopez and this is Access Hollywood. It's close. No way. Mario has access almost everywhere. Late Night at One on My 8. A day of history. Former President Donald Trump arrested and booked right here in New York City. We've got new details on the 34 felony counts he's been charged with, all stemming from a catch-and-kill scheme to hide sexual misconduct. Well, what happens now, and when will the former president be back in court? We'll have full coverage tonight on the CBS Evening News. And coming up on News A Now at 6, $42 million to decide the majority of the Wisconsin Supreme Court. An unprecedented type of judicial race, not just in Wisconsin, but across the country. I'll be sitting down with UW Lacrosse political science professor Anthony Tregoski on the strategies both sides have taken the last few months to try and earn your vote. That live in-studio conversation coming up at the top of the hour. And radar is pretty quiet right now, but as we dive south into Iowa, you can see some strong to severe storms near Ames, Iowa, down towards, uh, well, just west and southwest of Des Moines. Uh, these will uh, climb into our parts of the area later this evening. Uh, should weaken as they do so, but there still could be some strong to severe storms, especially south. 
Uh, temperatures actually rise overnight to about 53 degrees and then fall tomorrow afternoon on strong winds. Breezy and cooler Thursday, but look at that warm up mm -hmm. for the weekend and next week. Heat wave indeed. Thanks a lot, Bill, and thanks for joining us tonight at 5. We'll see you at 6.